having discussed this with the Maldi party and are they happy for the 51% versus 49%? Yes, uh, the Finance Minister has discussed this with the Māori Party with respect to uh, Section 9. I think it would be fair to say that they're happy that Section 9 uh, is in the legislation. Uh, they, of course, are not going to vote for the legislation, as they've already made clear. And if you wanted any other um, comment or reaction from them, you'd have to go and see them. What kind of advice are you seeking about Air New Zealand? Oh, well, right now Air New Zealand is about 26% privately owned already. And of course, if we're going to pass legislation that has an impact on the various shareholding requirements in that company, then there is some additional advice we need about the process and how we do that. So for example, Air New Zealand already has a restriction on any one foreign shareholder owning more than 10%. Uh, the share market rules limit any one New Zealander to uh, 20%, but as you be aware, the government's commitment is around 10% and securing in legislation 51% ownership. So we have to have a separate process for dealing with that because you've got these minority shareholders. So you're looking to do the same with Air New Zealand as the other ones. Could you not just leave New Zealand, Air New Zealand at 20 per cent? Uh, well the government's been very clear about what its commitments were and so we want to work for a process to put that in place. But that 10 per cent cap was to try and stop big foreign investors buying up but if it's a 20 per cent cap on New Zealand investors surely that's Okay. Well, that's not what the government said it would do, and what we're doing is we're getting legal advice and uh, commercial advice on how we best implement our policy on that. So won't that drive down the value of Air New Zealand, theoretically? Oh, look, I'm not in a position where I can comment on um, securities prices. You'd have to um, talk to others about that, and we're getting advice. Are there any existing New Zealand shareholders between 10 and 20 percent? Uh, of Air New Zealand? I think uh, if you look at the current annual report, the next shareholder after the government, on it, which is on about 74 per cent, is 3 per cent. So no one would be immediately affected and have to divest if you were yeah, to do well, look, so. We're in a position where as ministers we have to be careful about how we comment on uh, listed securities, but that's the information that's publicly available. So the sale of Air New Zealand could be delayed by how, how, how long? Well, Air New Zealand, is all, we've always said that um, with this whole sales process it's over a three to five year period and we've not indicated uh, what's in after mighty river power because we think that's a commercial issue. But clearly the government can't make any decisions with respect to Air New Zealand until we've worked through these other issues. And once we've worked through those other commercial issues we'll be able to put it in the pot as it were. But at this stage uh, we can't indicate a timeline around that. But how long will the issues take do you think? Oh look I think this will take several months and we're going to work our way through that. And as soon as we've made some decisions with how we implement our policy with respect to Air New Zealand we'll let you know. How but the government's pretty determined that we want to stick to the parameters that we've undertaken to the country. How are you going with identifying a, the, the second company to go off the block? Uh, well, there's a process around that. At this stage, the government hasn't made any decisions and we haven't received any advice on, uh, on the second one. We're really focused on Mighty River Power, which we want to get underway sometime in the third quarter of this year. There are suggestions that you might discount the price of Mighty River Power to ensure 100% New Zealand ownership. Is that in the ballpark? Well, uh, the whole pricing uh, situation hasn't yet been um, discussed or considered by ministers. We'll be getting advice on that. But we're pretty determined we want to make sure that we can do the level best we can to make sure that uh, there's as much New Zealand ownership as possible. But there's a, always been a tension with respect to this um, about um, the price and what proportion of foreign and New Zealand ownership you have. We've put some parameters on that and uh, as we get closer to the share offer we'd be able to give you more advice on that. Why will the corporate responsibility objective from the SOE Act not be extended to the new member? Well as we've indicated we want to get these companies as, in a form that is as close to the competing companies on the New Zealand Stock Exchange as is possible. Those companies don't have a legislative requirement around corporate responsibility but what we know is that people in business know it makes sense uh, to behave in, in a corporate uh, responsible way, corporately responsible way, and we would expect that that would continue. So the, obviously the objections immediately from opposition parties will be that this is just going to, you're freeing them to gouge with power prices and all the rest of it if you don't put that social um, and cor wider corporate responsibility on. Well they've um, operated as they have over the last 10, 15 years, um, putting up power prices even with a corporate responsibility requirement. So I don't think you should look at the corporate responsibility as being some sort of fetter on, on prices. Uh, it is on the overall behaviour of the company and I think you can see that already
companies that are listed on the New Zealand Stock Exchange take their corporate responsibilities seriously and would expect to build strong relationships uh, with their um, communities. I think if you look at those four electricity, uh, four energy companies, they do have strong relationships with their companies, with their communities, but I don't think that's necessarily connected to the corporate responsibility provision of the Act. It's connected to good business.